Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In this video, we will learn how to find the flexural strength of a steel beam according to the AISC specifications. The question is given and in this case, we have to find the flexural strength of this uh, steel shape that is W14 into 68 of A242 steel subjected to a continuous lateral support an unbraced length of 20 feet with CB is equal to one and unbraced length of 30 feet with CB is equal to one. Before moving to the solutions, first we will learn some important terms and definitions which are used to find the flexural strength of a beam. First is that, uh, what is a laterally supported beam? A laterally supported beam is a beam whose compression flange is restrained from buckling this is a beam whose compression flange is laterally supported in various ways such as it may be connected to the concrete floor either by its embedment or by shear connectors or the compression flange can also be restrained by its uh, connection to cross beams or bracing you can see the figure which shows the laterally supported beams in first figure the compression flange is embedded in slab in second it is connected to the slab by shear connectors and in third case the beams are connected by braces so these are all the cases of laterally supported beams also there are some definitions of the length of a beam first is the lb it represents the actual unbraced length of a beam this is the distance between points that are either braced against lateral displacement of the compression flange or braced against the twist of the cross section. After that, we have LP. It represents the unbraced length up to which yielding will control over lateral torsional buckling. For a hinge to form in a compact section, a beam, it must be braced to prevent the lateral torsional buckling. The limiting bracing distance to ensure the hinge capability is defined as LP. And this LR, it represents the unbraced length at which the lateral torsional buckling, it transitions from the inelastic range to the elastic range. Now the movement strength of these compact shapes, it is a function of the unbraced length. If the unbraced length is less than LP, the beam is considered to have full lateral support. And MN or nominal movement strength will be equal to MP, which is the full plastic movement capacity. If LB is greater than LP, but less than or equal to LR, the strength will be based on elastic lateral torsional buckling. And if the LB is greater than LR, the strength is based on elastic lateral torsional buckling. You can see the figure which shows the actual unbraced length of a beam for two different cases. Now the summary of the nominal uh, uh, flexural strength according to the AISC. So for I and C uh, shaped sections, the nominal bending strength is given as follows. If this LB, it is less or equal to LP, N, MN, it will be equal to MP, uh, which is equal to the FY into ZX. FY is the yield stress and ZX is the plastic section modulus. This is the AISC's equation F21. If this LB is greater than LP but less or equal to LR, the nominal movement strength is given by AISC's equation F22. This is the equation and it should be less or equal to uh, MP, that is the full plastic movement capacity. If this LB is greater than LR, then nominal movement strength is given by AISC's equation F23, which is equal to FCR into SX, which should also be less or equal to MP. FCR is the elastic uh, buckling stress, okay, and it is given by this AIC's equation F24, and SX is the elastic section modulus. Now coming back to our question, first part is that our beam has a continuous lateral support. For this case, we will uh, first determine some of the properties of this steel shape from steel construction manual. So for W14 into 68, its flange thickness is 0.72 inch, width of flange is 10 inch, plastic section modulus is 115 inch cube, elastic section modulus is 103 inch uh, cube, 
moment of inertia along weak axis is 121 inch 4 radius of gyration along weak axis is 2.46 inch warping constant is 5380 inch 6 torsional constant is 3.0 inch 4 and finally this distance between the flange centroids is 13.3 inch we need all of these values to be used in different equations to find the flexural strength of this beam for these three cases so in this question we haven't been given what is the yield stress of the steel so actually this yield stress it is a function of the flange thickness and uh, for our shape that is this w14 into 68 uh, flange thickness is 0 0.72 inch we can use the part 2 of the steel construction manual and from this table 2 4 this w14 into 68 uh, this is available in this a242 steel with a yield stress of 50 ksi so for this uh, question we will be assuming that our beam has a yield stress of 50 ksi and we will proceed accordingly next before finding the flexural strength we need to find out whether this shape is compact non-compact or slender so again from part first of the manual this bf that is the width of the flange divided by two times the thickness of the flange this is equal to 6.97 and this is less than the 0 0.38 under root e by fy whose value is 9.15 and it is greater than 6.97 it means that this flange is compact okay so this web is uh, compact for all the shapes in the manual which have a yield stress of less or equal 65 ksi our beam has a 50 ksi yield stress therefore we can uh, uh, consider that this w14 into 68 is compact because its flange is compact web is compact so we can consider it to be compact for a yield stress of 50 ksi because the beam is compact and for the first case part a it is laterally supported the nominal flexural strength will be given by AIC equation F21 that is nominal moment strength will be equal to the full plastic moment capacity which is equal to Fy into Zx that is yield stress times the plastic section modulus 50 into 150 which is 5750 kips inch or you can say it is 479.2 kips feet this is the nominal moment uh, strength design strength according to the lrft it will be 0 0.9 times 479.2 which is 431 kips feet and allowable strength for ast this will be equal to 479.2 divided by 1.67 which is 286.95 kips feet so this was the uh, flexural strength for the first case when the beam has continuous lateral support now when our beam has a unbraced length of 20 feet with this cb value equal to 1 first we will uh, determine this value of lp and lr so lp is given equal to 1.76 uh, times ry times under root of e divided by fy putting values of different terms we get the value of lp as 8.692 feet to find the value of LR, we need to first find the value of effective radius of gyration, which is given as by this equation, that is RT square is equal to under root of IY into CW divided by SX. Putting values of these different terms, we get the value of RTS equal to 2.799 inch. Now from AIC's equation F26, LR is given by this equation. And for this, we have to find the value of this jc divided by sx at zero so and also for this doubly symmetric i shape the value of c is one so putting values of the jc sx at zero we get the value of this equal to 0 0.002201 putting it in the lr the final value of the lr is equal to 29.28 feet now we can see that the value of this actual unbraced length this is greater than lp but it is less than lr so nominal strength will be given by aic's equation f22 which is this equation putting values of these different quantities we get the value of nominal strength equal to 381 kips feet which should be less than this full uh, plastic moment capacity that is 479.2 kips feet 
So the design strength for LRFT is 0 0.9 times 381, which is equal to 342.9 kips feet. And this allowable strength for ASD is 381 divided by 1.6N, which is 228.2 kips feet. Now for this part C, when we have an unbraced length of 30 feet with this bracing factor equal to one, since we calculated the value of LR in the previous part, it is equal to 29.28 feet. So uh, LB value is greater than LR. So it means that elastic lateral torsion buckling will control the strength. So for this, we will use the AIC's equation F24. And first we have to find the value of FCR, which is the elastic buckling stress. So we will put the values of different terms to find the value of FCR. The value of FCR comes out to be 33.9 KSI. Now we can use the equation F23 to find the nominal strength of this beam, which is the FCR times the SX. SX is the elastic section modulus. So this is 33.9 times 103, which is equal to 3492 kips inch, or you can say uh, 291 kips feet. And it should be less than this plastic moment capacity, which is 479.2 kips feet. The design strength, it will be given by 0 0.9 times 291, which is 261.9 kips feet. And this allowable strength, uh, this will be given by 291 divided by 1.67, which is 174.3 kips feet. Okay, so this is how we can find the uh, value of this uh, uh, nominal flexural strength for a steel beam according to the AIC specifications for three different cases when it has a continuous lateral support, uh, it has this uh, unbraced length. Uh, less than LP and uh, unbraced length uh, greater than LR. So I hope you guys learned something new from this video. And if you find this video helpful, you can subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.